March 2018 The grand sport name might be daft but the performance is very impressive, as Simon Harris reveals, there are so many new cars launched each year that it's impossible, even for someone whose job often involves evaluating the latest vehicles, to try every one in timely fashion. So I was happy to finally get behind the wheel of the latest Vauxhall Insignia this month, and put around 700 miles on it. While the Grand Sport name is a bit of a daft alternative to Hatchback, the car is, for the most part, very impressive. I was surprised that our Shri model was priced at just under £23,000, of course, most large end-user fleets will pay much less and buy the value of some of the options fitted. For example, the head-up display is priced at £290. These displays can give cars a real premium feel. This one shows speed, traffic sign and navigation information so drivers can see the figures without taking their eyes off the road. Compare this with a premium alternative such as a BMW 3 Series, which would set you back £825, the Insignia's sophisticated, automatically adjustable LED headlights at £1,010 are a bit steep but priced in line with rivals, although we'd probably leave those well alone. It's also disappointing to see car manufacturers making money out of flat paint finishes. It used to be that metallic paint or black paint commanded a premium, on the Insignia, only a G and blue is described as solid. Non-metallic summit white and lava red, as on our test car, are listed in brochures as brilliant, no more brilliant than other solid paint, and command a premium of £285. Someone please put a stop to this. Simon Harris February 2018 Luke Neal finds that automatic phone locks and accidental lockouts are easily resolved with the Insignia Our Insignia comes equipped with Apple CarPlay which Apple calls, the ultimate co-pilot. It says, CarPlay is a smarter, safer way to use your iPhone in the car. CarPlay takes the things you want to do with your iPhone while driving and puts them on your car's built-in display. You can get directions, make calls, send and receive messages, and listen to music, all in a way that allows you to stay focused on the road. When entering the car, my phone automatically connects via Bluetooth to the Insignia in seconds. Done. But if I plug my phone into charge, it automatically disconnects my phone from the car and activates Apple CarPlay. This, currently, can only be used by manually unlocking my phone to access its functions. It's very frustrating. I recently received a call while driving but couldn't answer it without finding my phone and unlocking it first which prompted me to look through my CarPlay connectivity options. It's worth noting that drivers do have the option for CarPlay to function while the phone is locked, which might be useful for some, or to forget the connection completely and stick to the Insignia's perfectly good Bluetooth phone connection and SatNav which are already built in, as I don't want to access the majority of my iPhone's functions while on the move, and I also find CarPlay sometimes slow to react, I have chosen the later. On a recent trip, I mistakenly locked the Insignia keys in the boot and the keyless entry wouldn't function. After a few moments of panic, I realized this was because the boot was only caught on the first latch and not fully closed. Once I had pushed it tight shut, the keyless entry was able to recognize the key was in close range and allowed the boot to open. Phew. Luke Neal January 2018 Luke Neal debates whether the Insignia's head-up display is an important addition for business drivers. In his long-term review, our Insignia is equipped with a head-up display, 290 pounds, which is optional on all Insignia nav models with the exception of the design trim level, it's the first long-term vehicle I've driven that is fitted with one. As you are probably aware, a head-up display, sometimes known as HUD, presents data without requiring users to take their eyes off the road. It was developed for military aviation so pilot's eyes do not need to refocus to view the outside after looking at the in-cockpit instruments. Vauxhall display shows current speed, RPM, gear change indicator and collision warning, but will also display turn-by-turn -turn directions when navigation is in use. It feels like an important safety addition, keeping driver's eyes facing forward. Previously I've often wondered whether a head-up display is just an annoyance or distraction, not so. In fact, quite the opposite, I find I rarely even notice the head-up display and, instead, look to the car's conventional speedometer and navigation screen for information. However, a colleague has recently commented on how useful he finds the head-up display. Whether it's an important addition for business drivers may well be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. Another important safety system included on our car is lane departure warning with lane assist. It comes as part of Driving Assistance Pack 1 which also includes Forward Collision Alert with Automatic City Emergency Braking Following Distance Indicator Traffic Sign Recognition Lane Departure is an impressive system which keeps the car between the white lines should you need it. If you change lanes, without indicating, the system will fight to keep you within your lane until you have crossed the white lines. 
It can be switched off by a dash-mounted button or overridden when the indicator is used. Luke Neal November 2017 After two months of testing, Luke Neal has grown attached to the Vauxhall Insignia Grand Sport. I have received positive comments on its premium good looks and the 1,845 miles have seen it begin to loosen up nicely, it has an impressive turn of speed for a relatively small, 1.6 liter 136 PS Ecotec diesel engine and is returning a healthy average fuel consumption of 55 mpg which is impressive compared to the Equa Index real-world figure of 47.9 mpg but still shy of the manufacturer's claimed 65.7 mpg. On the subject of fuel, and it's only a minor point, the fuel flap on this car is huge. I was expecting to at least find the ad blue filler inside to justify its enormous size, but there is nothing but the fuel cap. I will have to consult the owner's manual to locate the ad blue filler as I haven't been able to find any details online. Our VX line trim car has many optional extras fitted over and above the standard and with cold weather just around the corner, I am pleased our car has the winter pack 4 as an optional, 410 pounds, extra, the pack includes 3 stage heated front seats and a heated front windscreen which, from past experiences, will be an absolute joy on frosty mornings, I have recently discovered that the heated seats can be set to automatically activate via the on-screen vehicle settings menu so I have already begun enjoying their benefits. The car also has a heated flat-bottomed leather steering wheel which is part of the VX line trim rather than the winter pack, although it is available as an optional extra on other Insignia trim levels. Luke Neal October 2017 The first test of the Vauxhall Insignia Grand Sport reveals it to be good-looking, well-specced and fuel-efficient. We first drove the Insignia Grand Sport back in March. It's certainly a good-looking car and editor Stephen Breyer said at the time, we were always a fan of the underrated Insignia's exterior and the new car retains its position as one of the best-looking in its class. Our long-term vehicle is Entry VX Line Nav, costing £22,960 on the road. It comes well equipped with Navi 900 IntelliLink system and driving assistance pack 1, which consists of forward collision alert with automatic city emergency braking, following distance indicator and lane departure warning with lane assist. It also has the VXR styling pack, sport style front and rear bumpers, side sills and visible tailpipe, and of course, Fox All OnStar. We also opted for additional extras of head-up display, intelligent headlights, DAP4, wireless charging, 8-inch instrument display, brilliant paint and winter pack 4, heated front seats and windscreen, pushing the price up to £26,125. Under the bonnet is a 1.6-liter diesel engine which develops 136 PS and 320 newton meters of torque. It isn't the most efficient unit in the range, that's the 1.6110 PS turbo diesel with CO2 emissions of 105 grams per kilometer. But with CO2 emissions of 114 grams per kilometer and combined fuel consumption of 65.7 mpg it's likely to be the best balance of performance and efficiency. Inside, the dashboard is home to two 8-inch screens, the first is the touchscreen Navi 900 IntelliLink display which controls the audio functions, navigation, Bluetooth and vehicle settings as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The second is a digital instrument display which, along with the speedometer and rev counter can be customized to display fuel economy, average speed, tire pressure information and oil life. The interior has a premium feel, there is a good blend of leather and soft touch materials, smart metallic detailing and mood lighting. There is plenty of legroom for both front and rear seat passengers and the boots 490 liters feels cavernous. Economy-wise it's returning an average 56 mpg, just 10 mpg below the official figure. Luke Neal